Hey guys, it's officially the beginning of DIY July and we're gonna start this year's series off with the one so many of you have been asking about, the DIY wheel from Nitrogen's Cage. So first things first, Correct wheel size is very important. So on screen right now are the recommended sizes for each hamster species. And if you are ever in doubt, it is always safer to have a wheel that's slightly too big rather than slightly too small. A small wheel can cause a serious amount of harm to your hamster's spine, whereas the worst thing a big wheel is gonna do is be a little bit harder for your hamster to move. Now, for some reason, I apparently decided to make my wheel nine inches in diameter. I, I don't know why, I feel like I had a logical reason behind doing this at the time, but I filmed this part so many months ago that I just can't remember anymore. So here I am cutting two illogical nine inch circles from some wood. Now I recommend using the thinnest wood that you can within reason, of course, because the thinner the wood is, the lighter the wheel is going to be and the easier it's gonna be for your hamster to run on. Sanding is also really, really important because the last thing you want is for your hamster to get any splinters or injuries from rough edges. So when you're working with wood, do not skip sanding ever. It's so important. In order for the wheel to spin, it needs to be sitting on a dowel. And in order to insert the dowel, each circle needs a hole drilled through the very center. Because the dowel I was using was approximately 1.8 centimeters thick, the hole I drilled was two centimeters in diameter. So regardless of how big your dowel is, you want to make sure you drill this hole just slightly bigger. This next bit is my favorite part of this design. I wanted to make multiple windows like you see in a lot of commercial commercial hamster wheels for the hamster to easily enter and exit. So I used a 6.5 centimeter circle cutter to cut out four windows on each side of the wheel, making sure once again to sand those edges smooth. Now we need to move on to the stand for the wheel. This is a simple right angled stand with two arms protruding from the wall to support the wheel. To make sure the arms were really secured and could easily take the weight of the wheel, I cut notches into the back wall for them to sit into. Then on the end of each arm, I drilled holes that would once again be big enough for the dowel to be inserted. So for me, these were two centimeters in diameter. To fix the arms in place, you can either use a strong non-toxic wood glue, you can use nails, or you can use screws. Whichever you prefer, they will all do the trick. Now the next bit might seem kind of silly, but I wanted to darken the wood just a little bit. So I stained it with tea. Bear with me on this because tea really does make a great natural stain. All you have to do is soak a tea bag in some hot water for a bit, then apply the bag and the water to the wood. And you can layer it up as many times as you want to make it darker and darker and it will give the wood a really earthy orange tone. I would also advise that you take this opportunity to varnish the wood for some extra protection against urine. And the best natural varnishes that I can recommend would be linseed oil, tongue oil, or beeswax. Now getting back to the assembling, we need to fix the wall and the base of the stand together. So I used a combination of wood glue and screws as well as these two wooden triangle thingies because I needed all the security in the world for my worrying brain. Finally, approaching the last hurdle, it is time to thread the dowel through the arms of the stand and through the two pieces of the wheel. From there, we can start fixing on the lolly sticks. Yes, just simple craft lolly sticks, which I glued all the way around the wheel and I can tell you, this bit takes a very long time, so I recommend taking a seat while you do it. Also on every other lolly stick, I glued a thin kebab skewer to act as a grip so nitrogen can actually get some purchase when he runs. Sometime later, your wheel should look something like this. And the very last thing you need to do is glue stoppers to either side of the dowel. I just glued these wooden beads on, but you can use literally anything as long as it stops the dowel from sliding out. And that's it, it's done and ready to give to your hamster. I really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you're looking forward to the rest of DIY July, plenty of videos on their way. If you did enjoy this video though, please don't forget to leave a thumbs up. You can also share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.